Hey y'all, Joe from Southern Coastal Cooking here. I'm about to sit down to me a nice dozen of these beautiful grass bar oysters from a Giovanni's fish market. Oh man, out of California, just some beautiful oysters here. I mean, these things are gorgeous, clean as can be. And I just, I can't wait to taste these oysters, you know, from other parts of the United States, just like these grass bar oysters here from California. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead, I've got one already shelled over here, already shucked, and it's just a beautiful looking oyster here, and my wife would really love these, I wish she was awake right now, <laughs> being as I get home late, y'all know how it is, I do these videos and everything, but the perfect little size oysters, and these are the small, the large would even be great, especially for cooking. We'll go ahead and give one of them a try. And what I like to do, in fact, what I'm going to do with this one, I want to try this dude straight up, y'all. For the first one, I just want to have him just with all his, his, uh, his essence and everything. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Wow, this wonderful clean brininess there. That's, that's a nice oyster, y'all. Um, a little bit different than the oysters I'm used to. Ours are usually a little bit, uh, it's a, a slightly different taste. These actually have a, a little bit sweeter taste. Our oysters are very good. Mine are a little bit more briny, but I can actually I can taste a little bit of, it's almost like a, a cucumber. This is a, hard, a weird thing to say, but almost like a cucumber coming through there. And maybe that's when the, the grassy bar, like the grasses, but not in a bad way, like a nice, sweet, subtle taste to that oyster that it has. I mean, there's nothing, nothing there that just punches you too hard. You know, it's not, it's just a very mild tasting oyster with a sweet finish. And like I said, I, I, I compare it to, a lot of you, if, if you like to, to eat sushi or sushi rolls and stuff like that, you know, all of them have a little bit of the, of the cucumber and stuff like that. And a cucumber to me is kind of a sweet vegetable, has a sweet, fresh finish. The grasp of oyster has, has kind of that sweet, fresh finish by itself, just like that. Just a wonderful, cool, sweet, fresh finish mellow but yet a little bit savory so that was really nice and love that i tried that one by itself let's try one here with um with a little bit of a, a little bit of the cocktail on it just kind of like a lot of people try there go ahead and try one like that as well and also let's go down to the shucking because the grass bars are shipped live to you from giovanni's fish market and let's say uh, you know, normal times, you see in the rest of my oyster videos, I always have my oyster knife, everything else. Well, you know what? One thing down here, down south, with an oyster knife, you go over to somebody's house, everybody's, you know, you get around, everybody's drinking and stuff like that, and you're like, hey, let's get a, a sack of oysters. Well, what happens is, okay, I'll get a sack who's going to shuck them, and they don't have an oyster knife, so you're never going to get your oyster knife. Anyway, oyster knife's over to a friend's house. Least said so. What we had to do is improvise tonight. Um, I've got a little screwdriver, a little flathead. You can do this. Is you want to try find something with the little ball that you can put in the palm of your hand because you just want to be able to kind of rotate this in the flat tip. This will be just perfect for something like this. I just want to show you and always wear your glove on your other hand. This is a heat, you know, oven glove. I have something thick like this because I tell you what. All it takes is one bad slip up and you will uh, ruin your night and be off to the emergency room. So what you want to do, no, oh, with the oyster, like I've showed you before, see how you have a flat side and then you have a round side. You want to put the flat side up, round side down here, put on your towel or your oyster lead if you have one. And you want to just take the tip of this tip of your let me try to zoom in here a little bit for you 
a tip of your oyster knife. And it, by the way, Giovanni's Fish Market has some wonderful oyster knives that will sell you. But the tip of your oyster knife and or screwdriver, just kind of wiggle it there on the end of the oyster. And it's okay if some cracks off, you know, you're going to get that. We're just going to break in here right at the hinge. It may take a, you know, a few tries. And don't be too, too forceful. But once you get in, like I just felt it there, you'll, you'll feel it. It's just, you know, you'll... You can feel the shell just kind of lifting up. Sorry, this is kind of hard to do watching on the camera. But then what you want to do is you want to lift the shell up a little bit by a little bit. And one thing you want to do, you can take the glove off now because you're not going to slip, is uh, you want to scrape the oyster off the top of the flat piece of the shell. And this would be a lot easier with the oyster knife, I do admit that. Like I said, I hate that I didn't have mine on me today. Just go ahead, as you open the shell, you want to scrape that muscle off the top, the flat piece. Okay? And then you want to go on down the shell and just open everything up here and keep scraping. Trying to do it the best I can where you can see well enough what I'm doing. So as soon as you scrape that top piece there, just like that. Then, got a little butter knife here to switch to. Just kind of scrape this guy right off that little connector down there in the bottom of the shell. And you got it. Like I said, you want to keep this so you keep all your little juices and stuff like that. And take this. I'm going to put this guy on this cracker here. And we're going to put us just a little bit, this out of the way, a little bit of a simple, very simple cocktail sauce. On here, but I like it a very spicy style of cocktail. So, but you always want to use a nice, good, fresh horseradish. Mm hmm. We'll give this a try. This way. Mmm, mmm. Very, very good. Oh, yeah. Nice little punch to it. Enjoy that one for sure. So, there's your two ways to go ahead and eat your nice grass points raw and again like I said we want to um, it's best to have an oyster knife but it's not too too bad if you've got to use the screwdriver I'm gonna go ahead and shell the rest of these like I said just kind of getting here with my screwdriver and some are easier than others some are a little bit harder than others but I'll go ahead and get the rest of these open and I'll come back to you and show you what I got planned. All right, y'all. Now I got them all shucked here. We're gonna do our you know, third method of cooking them. We're gonna make some wonderful. Since St. Patty's Day, I should have a little green here. We're gonna make some garlic pesto oysters broiled, and I'm telling you what, this is gonna be awesome. So what I want to do here, first off, on the any time, I, I think it's really good to put a little horseradish in the oyster. It just gives it somewhat of a kick. With several recipes, this is pretty good, but I just like to go around and just put a little bit of that in the oyster. Just like that, y'all. That's just gonna make it extra good. Alright, now what we're going around and doing. Got a little bit of garlic, and this is one time you can use this squeezed garlic. Because you want it minced up and you want kind of a paste. So, you see me use this more than just on this, but I'm gonna put a little clump on each one of these guys. With this garlic. You can use the jar kind or you can chop it up fresh yourself. Whatever you want to do. I want to go back. We kind of spread that around though. You just don't want it to clump up in one place. 
put around the oyster and try to keep as much of the oyster as good juice in there as you can. That's the wonderful stuff. And notice I've got these in the oyster bed in the shells. You can do this too. If you happen to have live oysters you're cooking, which you know, we'll come upon those. You know, just sit them in here like this. It holds them perfect. You don't have to waste all that salt. You know, have a pan, have that big mess of salt. So, I've got these like that. Now, you want to come in with, I've got some basil pesto here, basically. This is just a tube of this basil. You can use a little pesto. Now, basically, this is just basil, and I've got my garlic here. That's gonna make the pesto part. So, get, this is making a basil garlic pesto here, right there in the oyster. That little piece, I mean, you can see it's just fresh, fresh basil, just ground into a paste. In fact, if this was the summertime, I'd get my leaves off my own plants out there and grind them in. That would be extra tasty. But, like I said, this is going to be our green. This is going to be a super kick of flavor here, too. And some good strong stuff, so you got to go easy on it. This basil. Really nice, though. Again, I'll go back. Kind of spread my basil out a little bit on the oyster. Give it that nice hue with the basil in there. Wonderful green. Oh yeah, beautiful. I might go back one or two and add a little bit to it. It'll be quite enough to take some from this one here. That's beautiful little basil. Add to these oysters and you can smell that basil too. Smells wonderful. Alright, so we got our basil there. Now I want to come with Parmesan cheese. I have found for some reason it's best to use this powdered kind. Uh, you can use the fresh if you want, but for me with the grilled oysters, I don't know what it is about this stuff. Just when you use the fresh, it gets kind of stringy. When you use this powdered, it's a little bit better. I don't know why, but it is. Go ahead and put a little bit of that on there. Sprinkle them real good. Parmesan cheese. Oh yeah, you can still smell that wonderful basil and everything like that. Got that in there. I'm gonna take good quality olive oil. I'm gonna put just a little drop on each one of them. So set that off a little bit that that now I got about a 400 I don't know about 450 degree oven we'll put in there for about I'm not really sure we'll go about five minutes at first okay y'all all right y'all gonna go ahead and put these in the oven like I said I got preheated about 450 degrees and we'll set my oyster bed right in there with the oysters we'll let these go about five minutes or so at first all right, it's been about five minutes. Let's check on these grassy bar oysters. Okay, that's good. That's what we want to see. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn them here. I'm going to show you. Turn them like that, just where they're parallel to my broiler burner. Yeah, I'm going to turn my broiler on. We're going to just get the tops of them real good, get some browning on there, and we'll watch them, check them about every minute or so. And what's under the broiler, you want to check them about every minute or so. Just make sure nothing overcooked but they're doing fine right now look like they're just starting to, to get it hot there had not started bubbling yet now it's been about another minute on broil and you see how they're starting to bubble there it's where we really got to watch them close you don't want them to overcook what you want to do is just that little bit of top cheese just to brown just ever so slightly we just have the perfect broiled oysters here and then oyster bed. And look at the juice and everything else is just, I mean, just fantastic. How they're going to cook up. And I can smell that basil. All that goodness, y'all. These are going to be so, so good. Just about a minute more, y'all, and we'll be done. Oh, my goodness. They smell so good, y'all. Yeah, they're pretty much ready. I'm going to go ahead and get these out. All right, y'all. So, I can't wait to try these Giovanni's Grassy Bar Oysters. Mmm. Mm. Look at that. The basil. 
all that wonderful goodness. Let's give these a try. Oh my gosh, that looks good. Mm, mm, mm. Oh wow. Oh, that would be the perfect, perfect accompaniment to some nice light angel hair pasta. Oh wow, with the mm, a little bit, a little nice little bit of olive oil on the pasta. Take these, have these with a little bit of pasta. Also a little toast point, a little crustini. Oh man, you put this on there, that'd be just heaven on earth right there. Oh my gosh, y'all. Um, that juice, oh I need some bread to sop that up. These are absolutely delicious. Delicious. Look at those oysters. Oh my gosh, these grassy bars. Oh, they're just so full of flavor and so fresh. And then when they get hit with that basil, and a little bit of cheese. Oh man, the olive oil. It's that little subtle hint from that horseradish still. Mm, mm, mm. Fantastic. I'm going to check out Giovanni's Fish Market. Online, I'm going to order you some of these oysters. Man, great little place. I can't wait to try the other the shots ones I got. So, anyway, thank y'all a lot. Please like my videos, sub my channel. And I appreciate all y'all. Also, guys, don't forget this wonderful little setting here that we cook these in, the oyster beds. I'll post a link to them along with Giovanni's Fish Market there in the description box.